Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and what we're going to be looking at today is uh, how to uh, shoot and develop your own black and white 35mm film negatives. So the idea is by the end of this video you'll have seen uh, me talk about a little bit about cameras, um, a lot about what you need to develop 35mm film, black and white that is, and then we're going to go through the whole developing process right through to uh, uh, bringing some um, negatives out of, out of the soup so you can uh, so you can see see the whole thing because when you're get, getting into film photography um, and maybe you're shooting colour film and you're taking it to the lab to get it developed you'll go on websites and you'll see uh, people shooting black and white you think great um, but to get normal black and white film developed can be quite expensive you normally have to send it away there's not that many labs that will do it and to be quite honest, it's incredibly cheap in the long run to develop your own 35mm black and white film. It's very, very easy and probably, best of all, it's really fulfilling as well. You really feel like you're, um, you're, you're creating something. And I really want to kind of uh, empower you to watch this and go, gosh, that's something I could do for myself. And you'll go away uh, and, uh, and you'll do it. There's nothing quite like the feeling when you undo your Patterson tank and you take the, the roll of negatives off the, off the reel and you hold them up to the light and you can see you've actually made something uh, and it all works and, you, and, it, and it's really, um, really good. So first off, I guess, you know, why bother shooting film? Well, personally speaking, I think shooting film does make you a better photographer if you shoot digital because it makes you slow down because you've only got like 24 exposures or 36 exposures on, your, on the roll of film in your camera. Um, and there's a cost associated with that. You know, you've had to buy the film, you've had to uh, buy the chemicals to develop it. You know, it's about the time as well, the time you'll have to take to develop that film. You just take that little bit longer. You know, you, you'll you'll check your composition through your through your viewfinder for ooh, that's no good, is it? <laughs> through your viewfinder for that extra half a second or so. You'll make sure everything's straight. Um, you'll make sure there's no distractions around it. You'll check your exposure. You'll think about your exposure a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me, you've been thinking, OK, you know, this is a bright scene. Maybe I should be overexposing slightly so the, so the camera doesn't, doesn't darken it down too much. Um, and, it, and then what you find is when you go back to shooting digital, you take that with you. Um, you know, the, the idea of, of just, just pausing for that second, just to make sure everything's OK and then taking the picture. Another great reason for shooting film is that you can get excellent quality kit, almost professional quality kit, a lot, lot cheaper than it was when it was new. You know, you can pick up very nice SLRs, medium format stuff, 110 uh, format stuff, um, re really, really cheaply and shoot with it and enjoy the feeling of shooting with a nice quality SLR. The first quality SLRs I ever shot with were film ones. I used to have my Fuji uh, S5700, which was a great little camera. Um, however, I didn't really appreciate the difference was, you know, when you get an SLR and you're looking through the lens and you can feel the weight in your hand. And I shot with the SLT 101, really loved that, and then went on to buy the Canon 350D digital SLR after that. So that's, that's really, really good. Also, you might well find you've got relatives or friends who've got kit that's lying around that, that you can then um, make use of. Um, this particular one I've got here is a Fujika ST605. Nothing special, really. It's a fully manual... 35 millimeter camera um, works. Uh, it's a clock. I like to call them clockwork cameras. Doesn't need any batteries to run at all. It just uses a little battery for the light meter. But you, you know, you can guess with that sort of stuff. And um, you can pick these up cheap at charity shops, car boot sales. Doesn't have to be an SLR. Could be a compact. Anything like that at all. And um, another good reason for shooting film is that a negative will actually outlast the hard drive or the optical disc you've got with your digital pictures on many many times over you know a well looked after negative will last 50 years who knows maybe even a hundred years where you know your hard drives in your computer or your, your cds or your dvd roms um that they'll have long uh, ceased to be readable by then and you might say well you know may, yeah but in a hundred years we won't be shooting film you know ah that that might be true but i guarantee we'll still be there'll be something we'll be using that will be taking pictures and if you've got a negative all you need to do is hold that up to a window and you can take a picture of it and then you've converted it back into uh, into a digital image 
a lot of it also is the process. Just the process of shooting film and then develop it, developing it in itself is a nice experience. It's, it feels like you're getting your hands dirty. It's very analog, um, and I really enjoy that too. Now, 90% of what I take is digital um, because I really enjoy digital. I enjoy, I enjoy the instant factor of the fact that I can take a picture, I can look on the back of my screen, I can check it's okay, I can go home, I can upload it, I can share it all in the same day in a matter of hours if I so wish. But I also like shooting film as well, not as much because of the time involved, because you know I work full time, I've got a family, um, but I think film should have a place in every uh, photographer's heart at least, so they go and, and, and try it you know, at least, at least once. Now, before we really get started, I'd like to also say that I'm no expert at developing film and, and shooting film. Um, I just do it as a hobby, um, and the techniques I use and the way I do it is probably a little bit um, rough around the edges. Uh, anybody who's watching this who really knows what they do will probably wince at some of the things I do, the shortcuts I take, and the lack of accuracy um, that, I, that, that I do. But you know, doing things slightly not the right way introduces more randomness which is one of the great things about film as well you don't really know what you're going to get at the camera most of the time when you're developing your own film because of things like temperature um, exposure of the, of the film that you've done all sorts of things like that you know, how you agitate the film when it's in your Patterson tanks all that sort of stuff can, can change the final product so you know, if you're after perfection you know, I would say stick with digital, but if you want something a lot more analog, a lot more um, natural, kind of, in a way, then, then film is great for that, um, and to get that kind of organic look to, to the finished images. The other thing as well, which is really important, is we're dealing chemicals here, so you need to have, bear in mind, chemical safety, so if you do buy uh, the chemicals and stuff like that, keep them locked away from kiddies um, and animals and stuff so they can't drink them. When you're using them, we want to be using gloves, we want to be working in a well-ventilated area. And when you're disposing of chemicals as well, it's very important that you do it in the correct way according to your local laws and uh, local laws and bylaws. Okay, so let's start off. You know, what do we need to do for when we start shooting film? First thing, a film camera. This is a, an SLR. Um, it doesn't have to be an SLR, it could be a compact. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about 35mm film and developing 35mm black and white negatives because the kit is the easiest available to get, um, it's, it's pretty easy to do, it's cheaper to do and the film's readily available and the film's cheaper as well. When you move, you might want to move on to say 120, you know, medium format or large format, but if you start off with 35mm film you'll find it easier and, um, and it's a great stepping stone. Um, so, uh, it's a 35mm film SLR, pick one up, I don't know, like I say, you might have a relative that's, that, that's got one, pick one up cheap from a car boot sale, charity shop, anything like that, doesn't really matter. What does matter is, however, that it works. Um, and so, when you get a camera, don't put some a new camera, don't put black and white film in it straight away to get, to get it developed, because you want to know that it can take adequate exposures um, and focus correctly, because the process we're going to do does involve a fair bit of time and there's, and if you get to the end of it and you get a blank roll of film because your camera didn't work properly that can be really a big setback and very disappointing so I would recommend put at least one roll of colour film through your camera first and get it developed at a lab like your local boots um, or uh, I don't know who does it in America, uh, Walmart and stuff like that, or send it off. And, and so do at least one, probably two. That will also give you a chance to get used to the camera. Download the manual from um, it's butkus.org, B-U-T-K-U-S dot uh, org. If you go there, the, the guy has a link to thousands and thousands of camera manuals for older cameras. Or you may well find that if it's a current manufacturer like Canon or Nikon, you might well be able to go to their website and download the PDF of the manual. But get to know the camera first so you know, you have the confidence that when you put your black and white film in there that you're going to develop yourself, that you're, you're going to be doing as much as you can at this end to make sure the exposures work and the camera's not going to, uh, not going to let you down. So 35mm film SLR, fully manual on fine. Again, the most important thing, run colour film through it first to get it developed to make sure it works. Next thing, um, film. Part of this video as well is the fact that a lot of time um, people and, and guys say, you know, you can get this, you can get that. Well, 
what you might want to do if you're watching this video is you know make some notes or, or watch it again and i don't know buy the stuff that i got use the chemicals that i've got here because if you do what I do in this video, you will end up with some negatives at the, uh, at the end of it. I'm not saying they're going to be the best negatives for um, scanning later on, but you'll definitely get some and it'll definitely work. So what have we got here? Well, if you've been reading RobNonPhoto.com or listening to the SEO Photography Podcast, you know that recently I picked up a load of expired film from a guy for 30 quid. Got about 50 rolls of it. Fantastic. So what we've got here is Ilford FP4 Plus um, 125. So this is a, a pretty standard black and white film. If you're not sure what to get, you go into your local camera shop um, or go online and you're just looking for black and white film. Now, when, the film you're not going to buy is the C41 stuff, like uh, Ilford XP2, I think it's XP2 400 and Kodak do some as well. The C41 black and whites are designed to be developed in colour chemistry, so you can take them to your local lab. So don't get them. We just have the standard processing um, black and white film. So here we've got is Ilford FP4125. It's quite a low ISO and the ISO is how sensitive it is to film so it's not going to be particularly grainy so if my dodgy development techniques develop grain it's not going to be too bad. Um, and um, yeah I mean this stuff's expired but black and white film as long as it hasn't been stored in an oven or in a car it lasts an awful awful long time. So there we go. So we've got a film and we've got our camera. Now the other good reason for putting a few rolls of colour through your camera first is it gets used to loading it as well. Um, I won't go into here because you should should have practised that and, and got it in the camera so we, we've got a film. So now we're on to the, um, excuse me, we're going to be going for just to, to the, to the things we want. Actually I'm going to mention one thing about um, about when you, when you load your film. After you've loaded your film, right, um, and it's in the camera, and you're winding it on. Now this camera, uh, I don't think it's got any film in it. I think it's just got. Let's have a look. Right. What should happen is, but if you've loaded your film correctly and it's an SLR and it's got a, a rewind knob here, every time you wind on. Right, you can imagine the film's coming across and getting wrapped around there. This thing should turn like that. So when, whenever you've loaded a new roll of film in, make sure that as you're winding there, that one there is turning. If it's not, you haven't loaded it correctly and take it apart and put the film in again. There you go, that's my little pro tip. Because uh, <laughs> there's been at least a couple of times where I've got to the end of a roll of film, well what I think is the end, and I'm thinking wait a minute, I'm up to 36 exposures here, I thought it was only a 24, it's going, it's going, it's going, not realising that the film is just sat here, it hasn't gone around the take-up spool properly. So there we go. So we've got a camera, we've got a film. So what bits do we need to actually physically develop our 35mm film? So you can, well, let, let's imagine then that this is our roll of developed film, in fact, I'll tell you what, let's not imagine that. Let's put that film away in my pocket and get the film that I have actually shot. So this is a film that I've been taking over the last few days um, and, it, and it's, it was 36 exposure and I've been shooting it in the Fujika and it's all done so that's what we're going to be developing today as well. Now you may say, well wait a minute Rob, that's a fully exposed roll of film, why can I still see the leader sticking out of it? Aha, that's another pro tip as well. When you're rewinding the film, and you can only do this on manual SLRs that don't have auto rewind. When you're rewinding it, okay, when you feel it go click and come off the take-up spool, stop. Because one of the things you've got to do is we're going to use this leader to attach to our Patterson tank, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and if that has gone inside the, the spool, we've then got to get it out with a special tool, or we've got to take the cartridge apart, which can be a little bit fiddly. So if we're left with this, happy day, this makes our life much, much easier. So we've got a, we've got a roll of film. So what do we need? Well, first thing we're going to need is you're going to need to get yourself a dark bag, which this thing is, or you're going to have to do this in a dark room. Um, whenever we're working with film, as soon as we pull out the canister, it's going to expose, isn't it? It's going to be ruined if, it, if light gets to it. So what we do with a dark bag, you put your arms in it, and we can fiddle it out, and we can load the, the film um, from the canister onto a Patterson tank, which is light uh, safe, um, all in 
are all nice and secure and the uh, dark bands come in handy for, for lots of reasons as well if you've got a camera that's stuff that you need to take apart and there's film in there that you don't want to, to ruin it. If you do it inside the dart bag, it's going to be nice and safe. So, so you need to get a dart bag. Now, all of this stuff here, all these chemicals and accessories, well, probably not the chemicals, but all the, the, the hard stuff, if you like, the hardware, um, I picked this stuff up, up at Car Boots, um, but you could go on eBay, um, Gumtree's particularly good in the UK, probably Craigslist in America. Just look for listings that say black and white darkrooms uh, kit for sale or darkroom kit for sale. Go on something like FreeCycle or FreeGill and say, has anybody got any stuff? Because there's loads of this stuff in people's attics that they don't use anymore. It might have been from a relative who's passed away or a friend, um, and it ends up just being thrown away, which is terrible. Um, you can buy some of it now. I think Patterson still make tanks, and obviously things like the chemicals are still available. But you can pick up a really cheap second hand, and then you're kind of giving it a more of a life. So there we go. So we've got a dark bag. Now, the Patterson tank. This, if you like, this is our mini dark room. Um, this is where all the developing gets done inside these little babies. Fascinating little things. Let's take it apart so you can see. First off, we've got a lid that we can take off. But inside the Patterson tank, oh, uh, see all these little things? We've got loads of these. I keep these in my boxes of stuff. These are little, um, those little bags, that you, silica gel bags that you get inside electronic equipment to keep it dry. Um, so inside the Patterson tank, we have a roll. And what happens is we're going to be putting the film on this roll. And it's going to be going in there. It goes into the Patterson tank. The lid goes on. But we're going to be in all this all inside a dark bag as well. Once it's in there, that's pretty much light tight now. Um, and then we're going to be pouring our chemicals in. Give it a bit of a shake or agitation is the posh way of doing it for, for, for specific sets of times. Putting the we, we do three things: we we develop, um, we stop, and we fix. And then we're going to take it out. And all of this stuff is done in broad daylight. So you don't need to build yourself a dark room. As long as you've got a dark bag, excuse me, and one of these, you know, you're good to go. I'll be doing this all in in the kitchen in in a, in a few minutes. So, Patterson tank, very good. When you pick them up, I understand there's ones that have got um, metal reels, but uh, they could be a little bit fiddly to use. Um, one of the one of the ideas that you can do as well is if you've got like a cheap roll of film, a colour film that you're not bothered about ruining. Pull it out and, and you can practice all this stuff in the dark. So you need a Patterson tank. Um, what else have we got? A pair of scissors. We'll need these because when we take the film out of the roll um, and put it onto the roll that goes inside the Patterson tank, you've got to cut the end of it. So you need some scissors. Um, what else have we got here? Now, I've, I've, this is a timer. You don't need to buy a timer or have a timer because you could use your watch, your clock. I've just put it in there just to remind me an app on your phone. Um, because when we're doing our developing, you, you do things in for a certain amount of time. So bear that in mind. Here we have a marigold glove. Um, again, this is just to avoid having to touch the chemicals with our hands, especially when we're um, doing the agitation because when we're going to be doing the agitation in a bit we're going to have the stuff inside and one of the ways you agitate or mix the chemicals up is you turn it upside down and then turn it back again and that makes the chemical wash over the film in an even manner and um, if you've got any like if, if the seal's not great you'll get get bits going on your hand in the short term it's probably not going to do much but in the long term if you've constantly got your hands in, in nasty chemicals you can get dermatitis and all sorts of uh, nasty things happening Okay, so chemicals. Um, what have we got? So this is a developer. This particular one is called PQ Universal um, by Ilford. <laughs> it's actually a developer that's designed for use with paper, <laughs> not negatives, which I didn't know at the time. However, it does work, and I've had some quite nice results out of it. Um, chemicals are the one thing that you probably don't want to use that are secondhand that have been hanging around for years and years and years because again, they may they may have. Um, they mean you just not work anymore and you could go through this whole process, get to the end, pull your negative out and you end up with a, with a blank roll or it could just be just be ruined and stuff. So always buy fresh and it stays, you know, it keeps keeps for a long, long time in its concentrated form. Um, again, you can buy this mail order if you've got a London camera exchange near you <coughs> that could be, or a local camera shop, they'll probably keep some of this stuff or can order it in. So that one's if you 
peak of universal. So that's the thing that brings out the image in the negative. Stop. This is Ilford Ilfo stop. What this does is once we've done our agitating and our developing inside the tank for, I think it's about 10 minutes we end up doing it with, with this stuff. Um, the stop stops that developing process. If you imagine if we kept on developing, that the, the image would appear on the, on the negative and then it would disappear because it would carry on developing it and make it disappear. That stops the developing process. Ilfo stop. And then finally, we have fixer. Ilfo, Ilford Rapid Fixer. And what the fixer does is it means that when we pull the film out of the Patterson tank at the end, it, it doesn't act like film and then um, and expose itself again. So you know, these are the things that are really important. Three, three chemicals. Uh, I've got my, my developer, which is PQ Universal, which I know it's paper, but you know it works anyway. We've got our Ilfo stop to stop the process, and we've got our fixer to fix the negative at the end. When, when you get more advanced, there's all sorts of different ways of developing film and all sorts of things you can use. You can develop stuff in caffeine, you can develop stuff in different things as well. Again, but try and use standard stuff to start off with so you know you can get results, so you know your technique will produce something before you're moving on to all the esoteric stuff. Now, also, I'll just add as well, if you do go around to somebody's house and they've got a lot of this stuff and they've got a lot of old chemicals, don't take the chemicals. Because you, if you do take the chemicals, you're then responsible for disposing them. And you can't just pour most of them down, down, the, um, down, down, down the sink. Now, these are good as well. If you, if you see these, these are just little measuring jugs um, for, for mixing out your, your, your chemicals. For example, PQ Universal, you use 10 millilitres per 300 millimetres, millilitres of, um, of water um, and so these are, are done and if you look on them you'll, you'll probably see as well is I've written on them like F and S so fixer and stop because you don't want to be mixing the chemicals up either you don't want them contaminating each other and also lots of these chemicals will last as well so you know you don't need to throw all of them away um, depends on the chemical and you see the instructions that come with them you can see what you can do but for example I tend to hang on to my stop bath which is there and my fixer and again all the all these um, containers are airtight and I've written on them stop and I've written them on them fix so that I don't accidentally put the, the same chemicals in the same way and there's one that I use for developer I think the developer actually have to throw away with this once I've used it it's a one shot type of thing so that's why that one's not in there one thing that isn't in this box that I forgot to bring out as well, but you'll see when we go to the development process, is a thermometer for measuring the, the water, the temperature of our chemicals, because we need them to be at about 20 degrees Celsius um, through the process. Um, that, that means that we can then rely on the timings from, uh, from, from information about the developers to make sure we're going to get an image. So if you imagine we do all, for, do all our developing and then we finally pull the film out of the Patterson tank. So we've got this roll of film, so what do we need next? Squeegees come in handy. We can use these to gently dry the film off. Like that, very, very gently. You can also use your fingers if you want. And also clips. This to hang the film up afterwards to make sure it dries nice and uh, nice and evenly. And there's the, you know, we've got metal clips. We've got plastic clips, all that sort of stuff there. What else have I got in here? Well, I've also got, I've got some more jugs, you know, written on it. I've got, um, I always keep the spare spools and stuff from, from old films. You never know when they might have, come in handy. There's a 120 spool, that's it. You know what doing in there. So there we go. Um, oh, yes, one final thing. You remember I said about it might be quite difficult to get the get the film out of the uh, at the end. This is a little tool you use for getting the, the leaders out of um, cartridges. And what you do is if that leader's gone all the way back inside, you insert this in, put the two tongues in, turn it around and make it click and pull it out. These can <laughs> be a right nightmare to get used to. Luckily I worked in a camera shop for a, for a while where we developed film and you kind of get used to, to using these so, so they're useful. Or the other way you can do it as well is actually in the dark bag you pull the cartridge apart and pull the film out that way uh, and do it. Okay, so we've kind of covered there everything you need to develop film. So next thing would be normally to go out and shoot some film. Um, I've got some here that I've uh, done already. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move to the kitchen 
and then we're going to start developing or souping our negative. Okay, so welcome to my dark room, otherwise known as the kitchen of our house. So what we're going to be doing next is uh, just mixing up the chemicals, uh, preparing them. So uh, we're going to get them all ready, and then we're going to get them in the sink which um, is prepared to a carefully controlled 20 degrees Celsius, give or take 5 or, <laughs> five or 10 degrees Celsius, roughly around that sort of stuff. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the film out using the dark bag, and then we're going to start processing it. So, here we go. I've got everything kind of... The, the, the trick often with this stuff is just being organised, you know? Um, there's... Um, that's my thermometer from uh, that I didn't have earlier. Now... That's quite a posh thermometer, just to check the temperature of the water in the sink. But, you know, any thermometer will do. Um, just don't use the one that you normally put in your, in your mouth. Um, and so the water in the, in the sink needs to be at 20 degrees Celsius. So I've already uh, prepared that. Simply by putting some cold water in, then putting some hot water in until it gets around 20 degrees Celsius. So we, now we need to mix up some fresh chemicals. Now, if you think, well, how much do I need? What, what do I need? How, what are quantities? How do I work it out? Well, there's a few places to go. You can look at the instructions that come with the developer. And you also can just do a search on the internet. But you can also go somewhere called the Massive Dev Chart. Do a search for that on the internet, Massive Dev Chart. And um, that will tell you, if you go into it, to, to this, uh, it's basically a list of films and developers and times and temperatures for getting uh, acceptable uh, development out of negatives. And it will tell you the ratio you need to put in. And there you can work it out. So, for example, with Ilford PQ Universal, this paper film that I use for my negatives, it does work, honestly. I need to put in 10 millilitres of this for 300 millilitres of water. Now, I know you're saying, well, how, how much do you need to, how much do you make up? Well, if you look on your Patterson tank and look on the bottom, it says on this one, each film uses, for 35 millimetre or 126, I need 200 mil 290 millilitres um, or 10 fluid ounces or twice as much. You can do two films at once as well. So I need roughly 300 millilitres of, of stuff, don't I? So here we go. So I've got my jug. Um, I've just checked where 300 millilitres get. It says dev on it. Didn't use it for anything else. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just put roughly. <laughs> get this all roughly. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not accurate. Uh, if I tell you what, let's shake this up here. Roughly. Be very careful you don't get any of this stuff in your hands either. I should be wearing my glove, but I forgot. I'm going to be careful. So roughly, what was it again? Read. Right, 10 millilitres per 300. See, I've written on the back of the packet as well to remind me. So, so where's... So there's 100, so 10 is just going to be just a bit in the bottom. That's, that's probably... I reckon that's about 10, maybe just pour a little bit back in. Let's have a look. A little bit more. Normally I would use one of these, but I can't find my extra one, so I'm just sort of guessing a little bit there. Now I make this up to 300 with water. There we go, so I've got my 300 mil. Put the lid back on my developer. And what I'm going to do now, put this in my jug that says developer on it. So that goes there. And you might think, well, why not? Why bother? Why not just keep it in the jug? Well, the reason being is that this is going in this watertight jug and it's going in the sink, which is full of water um, at roughly 20 degrees Celsius. So that will now make sure that that developer comes to 20 degrees Celsius. Now I just have to let a little, let a little bit of water out to stop it to stop it floating. So that's that one. Now our stop needs 15 millilitres per 300 millilitres. So, so it's 15. So these are easy with these. These you've got little graduations on. So 15 millilitres is... Probably about there. Now I need to make this up to 300. So I've made it up 
made that up to 300, so that's now my um, my stop. So this is going here, like so. Obviously, you can get your Tupperware from any sort of uh, supermarket or anything. So that's going into the sink as well. And now we want the fixer. So the fixer uses 75 millilitres per 300. It's got a chop proof lock on. Repeat to me. Uh, 75 millilitres. And again, make sure you're in a well ventilated room when you're doing all this. Have the windows open and everything because these chemicals aren't the best in the world. So let's make it up to 300 millilitres. There we go. That then goes in my fix. One. So again, the key is preparation and making sure we don't get any of our chemicals mixed up. Now my fix and my stop I can keep and when I've, I can pour them from my Patterson tank back into the containers and use them again as long as I don't wait too long in between. But the PQ developer you have to bend you know every time you use it. Right, so I don't know what you can see, but all my chemicals they're in the sink. Um, they're coming up to temperature nicely, so I'm going to leave them for a couple of minutes while I transfer the film uh, into the Patterson tank, and then we can start developing it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put our film into our Patterson tank. Meanwhile, the, uh, our chemicals are still in the sink. They're just at around about 20 degrees Celsius, so that's fine. Now, let's take the Patterson tank out. And off. Here we have. You kind of get this little twiddly thing, and there's like a holder for the spool. So you kind of have the the spool, the uh, the holder. The spool goes on, and then there's like another holder that just goes on the top, just to stop the spool when, when we're going to agitate it, when we're going to mix it all up. Um, so what we need to do is to get our film onto this completely out and then cut but as I said before we need to use our dark bag but you don't want to dive into try and doing that straight away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you do it with um, just an ordinary roll of film um, just to get used to how it feels because as soon as you get in the dark bag and you can't see where you are you're kind of committed to doing it. It's not like you can stop, take it out, have a look where you've got and, and you've got it and, and start again. You've got to keep going and got, got to get it finished. So I would say practice as many times as possible. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our, uh, this is a roll of, an old roll of colour negative film that I'm not bothered doing. You know, this is a practice roll that I keep. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to cut the leader off so it's nice and straight. That goes in the bin. And as you can probably see there we've got a nice straight leader. And the way that these things work is it's a bit like a ratchet. So you, what we do is we feed the film in and there's a couple of little ball bearings that it holds on to and then we just go like this. We just turn in it, click, 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 click and it will gradually take it round. Now this bit we can do in the light actually with our colour film just to get it started. Um, but as soon as it starts coming out so all I'm going to do now is I just feed that in like so. So that, that's in there. Um, now what I would do is I would then get my scissors because we're going to need that as well to cut it. Get my Patterson tank and all the bits and everything goes into the dark bag where you can hold it. You zip up the dark bag, make it light tight. Even when you're working with a dark bag though, it's often an idea to do it in a room with subdued lighting anyway. So if there's any light getting in, you can't see it. And then when you get to this point, all you start doing is just turning the Patterson tank. And it's on like a ratchet. And it starts pulling it out. When you're in the Patterson tank as well, what you can do is you can pull that off. Now what we don't want to be doing when we're in the dark bag is touching the film with our fingers. Um, now luckily, obviously, the bit that's been exposed is on the inside. But when we develop the film, it's going to turn clear, isn't it? So we don't want marks on the back. And all you do is just keep going like this. And then in the bag, what I tend to do is I, I tend to pull it out a little bit like that. 
because you can kind of feel it. If you put your thumbs where the little arrow, arrow things are, and you keep going, and keep going, and keep going, and keep going. Remember, this is all in the dark. <laughs> and it's very easy for me to stand here and do this now. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Till eventually... Now, if you get to a point, especially with the, where you roll your own film, where it won't take up any more, you know, like there, there we go, we've got to the end now. So there's no more film in that. Again, we're, so we're in the dark, so very carefully, so we don't cut ourselves. We then would cut that off, put that to one side, and then in the dark, in fact, I'll tell you what, for, for purposes of the video, I was going to keep this roll of film as a practice one, but purposes of the video, so we're in, in the dark bag, so I've now cut that off, so that's all ready to go. So we're still in the dark bag. I would then take my little um, spool, put it into the Patterson tank, put the little twiddly bit on, like so. And remember, this is all in the dark bag. The top goes on. Spin it on, make sure it's on nice and securely. You know, we haven't crossed it. And the lid goes on. And that's it, we're done. What you can then do is now you take the hands out of the, cup, uh, out of the light bag, take it all out, and that is now our light safe container ready to develop our film. So there we go. Now, I would say practice that two or three times. Not probably with the cut, only do the cut of the film bit right at the end if you use an old roll of film, because obviously I can't practice. Well, actually, I could sell it to back together again, couldn't I? Um, just to get used to it, because I say, once you've committed to the dark bag, and you're in the dark bag and doing it, and you're halfway through, you can't stop, you can't pull everything out, have a look, and start again, because that film must not be exposed to, to any light at all. So there we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to get my dark bag out, and I'm going to do exactly what you, you saw there, um, but I'm going to do it um, in the dark. One thing, actually, I didn't cover was the fact that getting your leader out. If your leader's gone all the way back in, that's where these little tools come in handy. Um, you can always buy one of these and practice with it again, but basically, in essence, what you do is you put, put it in, slide the thing in, the top tongue, turn it until you hear it click, slide the other one in and pull it, and it'll pull the leader out probably on about the tenth attempt. It's quite tricky to do. However, if you can't, if you haven't got one of them or can't be bothered, when you're in the dark bag, what you can do is you can actually pull the film apart very gingerly. The canisters come apart quite easily and pull the film out that way. But be very careful because you can end up with sharp edges and you can cut yourself. Um, and, uh, and we don't want that. Also, you'll find inside the dark bag, it can get very, very sweaty if it's a hot day. So make sure you do it as quick as you can, because you don't want to get, you know, water and crap on, the, on, on everything. So there we go. I'm going to do it in the dark bank, and then we're going to actually get down to the, the, uh, the nitty-gritty of developing our negatives. Actually, I thought I'd just add a quick little bit in before we go on to developing the film. Um, as you can see, I've got my dark bag out here. Um, and the, the trick to being successful when you're doing your do dark bag that I found is getting everything ready so you know where everything is when it's in the dark bag. So your typical dark bag, that's where my arms are going to go in at the bottom. And then we've got two zip compartments at the top. So here's my Patterson tank. I've kind of just threaded it on. So I'm just going to tuck that in the left hand corner so it's out of the way. There's the lid, that's in there as well. And there's the little spindly bit that goes in there. I've, I've cut my film and I've threaded it into the spool so it's ready to go and I'm putting that on the right hand side and then my scissors which I need as well I'm just putting it at the back and then what we do is we then zip up the first bag first zip I mean your light bags might be different but this is what mine's like so put the second one. I would normally turn off the lights as well. Just to show you how it kind of is, your arms go through here. You tuck them all the way up as far as you can. This is like those... Uh, and then I can kind of feel where everything is. So I know my film's over there. So that's good to go. I can feel my scissors at the back. I can feel my Patterson tank. There's the lid. 
Where's the spindly bit? There's the spindly bit. So I can feel everything. I know where everything is. And I'm ready to get down to work to start spinning it and put it, putting it on. So there we go. Right, let's see what happens. Okay, so I've successfully uh, got my film out of the cartridge. It's now sitting in my nice light safe Patterson tank. Um, again, although they are light safe, we are going to be taking the lid off and pouring chemicals in and stuff. And everything is designed so no light gets in. But again, don't do it in a room that's got really, really bright lights. Just make everything nice and dim so you can just see what you're doing. Get your, some music on. Get the film photography podcast on your iPod. Um, and then the other things we're going to need before we get started are some sort of timer and our instructions. So one of the things I always do is I have my instructions to hand. Luckily enough, they're on my phone. I will, the other thing I will do as well is if you go over to robnonphoto.com and then go to the film section which is in the block of the menu at the top of the big menu and then scroll down a bit there's, there's an article about my developing my first black and white roll of film and it's all these chemicals and in it I list exactly what you've got to do so it's a really simple you can just follow that have that to hand maybe even print it out um, and then you always know where you are and what you're meant to be doing um, again, I, I really enjoy this part of it because this is like a, the drum roll that's building up to when we actually get these negatives out and we've developed them. So first things first, again, look at my instructions, we need to do the pre-soak. And so what the pre-soak is, it's just to, to wet the negatives down. And so all we're going to do, we're just going to put some tap water gently into the passing tank. That'll be enough. Put the lid back on and according to my instructions, um, agitate it for two minutes. So when we say agitate, what we mean is we really just mean turn it upside down. So again, at this point, again, you would start your timer, do it two minutes. It doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be exact. The other thing you can do as well is if you bang it down, that will get rid of any bubbles that have formed on the film. So there we go. So I've got to do this for two minutes and then I'll be back in a sec. Oh, and then obviously when you're finished, we pour it away. Okay, so I've done my pre-soak. Now we're actually going to put the real chemicals in. Because they're real chemicals, we're going to start. We're going to put our marigold on to make sure we're not touching any of them. There we go. So the first thing we're going to put in is our developer. And according to my instructions, um, for this type of film, um, uh, with this type of universal developer, we're looking at about, um, I think it's about five minutes, um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to agitate it every minute. So we're going to pull the developer in, and then every minute, we're just going to in invert it like that. So, um, let's crack on. So, lid off, chemical ready. Gently pour the chemical in. Remember that tip about tapping the Patterson tank down to get rid of any bubbles that formed, not too vigorously. So that's in. Lid back on the Patterson tank. That to one side, not going to need that anymore. Onto my phone. I've got the stopwatch already. So we go start. So I'd leave it about a minute, um, invert it to agitate it, turn it back upside down, give it a tap and I keep doing this for five minutes, inverting it every minute. Okay so we're coming up to the end of the, the, the five minutes for the developer, just give it another agitation. And um, that's it. We're pretty much good to go. So let me just stop my stopwatch. If I'm just going to leave it in for another 20 seconds. I don't know, because I feel like it, because it's old film. It might need it. Give it a bit more of a shake. Okay, so that'll do. Um, so what we do now, is so we're just going to carefully pour this way. Now notice how I'm using my gloved hand and I'm holding onto the spindle. Right, I just pull this way again. Consult your local regs to see if you're allowed to pull this down the drain. 
we'll put the top back on. And again, always consult your instructions because the last thing you want to do is do something in the wrong order because it will ruin your film. So here we go. So next we need the stop bath. So we pour in, pour it in, then pour it out, and then repeat it. So I've got my stop bath ready. Lid off. And remember, what this is going to do is stop that developing process. Any developer that's still left on the film, this will stop that from doing it. <laughs> Funnily enough, the clues in the name. So give it an agitate. For some reason I've got pour it out and then repeat it. Hell, I can't remember why I've done that. There must be a good reason. So let's pour it out. Pour it back in. Again, the stop bath, this particular stop bath can be used again. back on. Give it a good agitation. Upside down, right way up. That should have done its job now. So let's pour that back into the container. Normally actually I wouldn't make up 300 mil of stop bath, I'd make up 600 mil. Um, Purely because the, you always lose a little bit of chemicals in the process, um, and then you don't want to get to your next roll of film to find, you know, you, you haven't got enough to, to do it. So I'll finish with a stop bath. That can go to one side. So now we're into the fixer. Here we go. I've got my fixer ready. Again, consult the instructions just to make sure we're doing everything in the right order. So fixer. This has got to be in for 10 minutes and agitated for 10 seconds every minute. So I'm going to pour it in, agitate it, turn it upside down, give it a shake, give it a bang, do that every minute um, for 10 minutes. So let's get ready. Lid off. Chemical in. I quite like the smell of chemical actually. Does that make me a bit odd? I don't know. You definitely feel like you're doing something though when you're doing this, you know? Lid on. Let's give a bit of an agitation. Let's start the stopwatch. So we're going to leave this a minute. We're going to convert it, give it a bit of a shake, give it a bit of a bang, and in 10 minutes we'll be done. Okay, so we're coming to the um, coming to the end of uh, the the, the uh, fixer process. We'll uh, come up for ten minutes. So one final agitation for ten seconds. Give it a shake, and that's it. Now remember, fixer can be used again. One of the big reasons for shooting black and white film is to make it really cheap in the long run. fixer in. Now, pretty much the film is, is, is pretty much there now, but what we, all, we need to do now is we need to wash this fixer off um, and then we need to use a uh, something called a wetting agent as well uh, at the end. So uh, to wash it off, all we're going to do is we're going to use tap water, fill up the taps and say And what I'm going to do now is, for about for about 10 minutes, I'm just going to leave the water in there, and then about every minute, I'm just going to agitate it for um, for about 10 seconds. And what that will do, that's just getting rid of all that um, that fixer off the film, and um, and then we'll almost be finished. Okay, so we're almost done. I spent 10 minutes. I'm just going to. Pour away this water. I'm going to put in some fresh water. Pour it away. Just making sure that all those 
chemicals are gone. Okay, now we're almost done. It's starting to get really exciting now because we're, we're about to uh, take the film out. Now what we need to put in next is we need to put in a, a wetting agent. Now, what the wetting agent does is it makes the water slippier so it comes off easier. So all that we're going to use, we're going to use a tiny little bit of washing up li liquid, the smallest little blob. Oh. That's it, the smallest little blob. There we are, fairy. Keep your hands soft as well. And then we're going to slowly fill the Patterson tank out with water. Slowly, because we don't, we don't want to make it sud up, do we? We don't want to end up with loads of bubbles. So we're just filling that up to the top, nice and slow. Right, that's full. And again, what that does is it just makes that water come off the fill. Right, so here we go. So now, <laughs> this is the moment of truth. This is the point where we now take the film out and we see whether, I don't know, it could be hours that we've spent taking film with our camera, you know. Um, it could be weeks. It could have been a special project that we've done on film. Um, this is where we find out whether our chemicals work. Do we have any light leaks or anything like that? We just don't know. This is, this, this is interesting. If, you th if you've shot a bit of colour film and find it exciting when you go to the lab to pick up your prints, this is even more exciting because obviously we've invested all this time. Not much money. It's all about time. So here we go. I don't know. Let's see. Now what you'll find is when you first take it out, you, you might be a little bit dismayed. Because while the, when the film's on the roll, um, it's all black because it's not against each other. So what we need to do now is we take the holder off take the spool out and if you turn the spool you can crack it open I don't know whether you'll be able to see this let's see what happens can you see at this point I know that I can see can you see images coming up there they are Fantastic. It all works. The camera works. The developing works. This is where you know you physically made something now. This is something that if you look after it properly and store it properly, will be around in a hundred years. You know, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will be able to dig out grandpa's negatives, scan them with whatever they've got. They can just take pictures of them with their, their phones and they can see what you've been doing. And these, these will be around an awful lot longer than the hard drives and those discs for your can you I don't, see I don't know whether you can can you see can you see that Look, let me come closer to the camera there they are it's all there okay so I can actually I don't know why I've still got this glove on because this is just water on them now and so now the trick now again you can use your fingers nice and gently or you can use a squeegee is just to we're just going to squeegee this off. Now this is a 36 roll, so as you can see it's pretty pretty long. And we want, what we want to do now is we just want to hang this up somewhere where it can uh, where it can dry and not get too dusty. So that's where these clips come in, in plastic ones. A good place actually is in the bathroom. Go in the bathroom, run the shower for a few minutes just to get it nice and damp, and that will make all the all the dust come down. And then hang them up, hang your neck up to dry. Um, let me just. Uh, clip this on to there and um, let me find somewhere just to hang this up just out of the way so we can just finish off finish off the video now and what I'll what I'll do is I'll take um, a couple of um, photos I'll, I might even have time to, to maybe scan some of these so there we go so hopefully you know, in this video, we've gone through the whole process. We've talked about cameras, we've talked about film, all the development stuff, all the kit. We've gone through developing your own black and white 35mm film at home. And as you can see, it's really easy. It's so enjoyable and so rewarding when you get it out and it's worked. 
The next stage would be then, obviously, to scan it. Um, and you could get uh, use a flatbed scanner, you could use a dedicated one of those Kenro scanners. You can hold it up against the glass and take a photo of it with your camera. Um, there's, there's apps for, for Android and iPhone where you can take pictures of negatives and then it'll uh, reverse everything and turn it into a photo. There's lots, lots and lots of different ways to do that, and that's like a whole nother a whole nother, a whole nother uh, video tutorial, but hopefully with this one you've kind of seen what you can do. Now, purists out there might have winced and might have thought, oh, you shouldn't have done it like that, or you did that wrong, but as you can see, with film, this black and white film, there's so much latitude, you don't have to be exact, and in fact, all this randomness from temperature and exposure, the type of film, how old it is, how it was sold, all that sort of stuff, comes up and makes each uh, picture really, uh, really individual. So there we go. If you've got any questions about developing 35mm film, black and white, send me an email. I'm scalespeeder at gmail.com. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, look in the, the description little bit below the video, and I'll put a link there to my main article, article on robnumphoto.com um, that kind of goes through all this with, with photos in a description, so you can follow it that way. Obviously, if you're on robnumphoto.com and you're watching it there, then um, you'll see, again, I'll put that on the page uh, below below the embedded video. If you're watching the video somewhere else, hi, go to robnonphone.com and um, find the video and put it on. Actually, it's probably easier to click on the video, go to YouTube and, and see the link there. Um, so there we go. How easy was that? I'm Rob from robnonphoto.com. You can contact me. <laughs> scalespeeder at gmail.com um, these are my negatives why don't you do the same you're going to enjoy it and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time